Hey everyone, Ice King here. Welcome back to episode 13 of the Frostcast. I am joined here with a little different setup than normal. AJ is on thing because family might be sick. And we are joined by a special guest, Jay from Hampton Roads Atlanteans. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay. And I'm still AJ. <laughs> Just sounding different because he's not here in person. But what have you guys been up to this past week? Uh, painting. Painting? What are you painting? A variety of things. Um, working on some Signar for the my store's uh, demo army and painting some Grimkin and the little bit of uh, my Gen Con Kador that I need to get done for when the army box comes out next week, finally. <laughs> what about you, AJ? You still unpacking? Yeah, I'm still unpacking. Um, like you saw my garage today, you delivered the table. I could walk so. into it, it was good. Yeah, so huge room, <laughs> and I can get to all my models, so that's a plus. Uh, it should be done in the next couple weeks, and then we can start shooting battle reports at the house. That'll be good. It'll probably be like a maybe a Wednesday thing. Could just, instead of just doing War Table, I could just come over and play. Yeah. Um, for me, didn't I got the Orgoth up to gold? Posted that a lot of people saw that, and people were like, "How'd you do that?" And I was like, "More steps than you think." <laughs> <laughs> It is funny seeing people like I, when I post things. They're like, "How'd you do that?" Because it is like a really bright, very different gold than what you see on most models, and it's all going to get covered up. It's fantastic. Yeah, you did all the pre steps for the the main step that then leads to the other steps. Exactly. Yeah, there's so many steps. Um, for everybody wondering, there's primer, there's a then a second, there's primer black, another black, then gold, then red, then clear coat, and then the then the armor's done. That's it. Then we go into the rest of the painting. Each step takes about like an hour and a half with the amount of for two for two army boxes. Um, probably because I'm using a small airbrush, so I'm just being a little bit more precise. But that's just to yeah, save yeah. paint. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, that kind of goes over the intros. We can get into some the new War Machine stuff. The app fully oh. launched. What do you guys play? Oh, that's a good question. I know we wanted to do real intros for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reminding me because my scattered oh, yeah. brain didn't remember. Yeah. Um, I Ice King. I play Retribution, soon to be Dusk, and I paint things. More of a painter than a player. So I uh, have everything for trolls, but like a couple models. So I play that pretty heavily. Started in Mark Two and continued on through Mark Three. Uh, I have like five units of Rune Shapers, a bunch of light trolls when they were good. So played kind of the meta for that. Um, Lynn, I picked up Infernals as kind of like my second main army. Kind of played them towards the end of Mark Three, and I played them a little bit in Mark Four, and they're pretty strong, but as everybody's seen, probably going all in on Orgoth right now. <laughs> two army boxes, two expansion boxes, at least, and then the battle box, so I have almost full FA already on order or in hand. Yeah. Oh, don't forget your Crucible Guard. Oh, yeah, and uh, <laughs> randomly, uh, I was going to play Crucible Guard this year, and I bought uh, everything for Crucible Guard, and then Mark IV dropped, and then I just lost complete interest in them. So they're just sitting there, like, maybe 10 are painted, and then I found out Mark IV is happening. So Yeah, he well, got them, and then brought them over, beat my ass with them a few times, and then I was deployed, came back, Mark IV happened. I haven't seen them leave his garage since. <laughs> well, I can tell you that Crucible Guard are nuts in Mark IV. I have, I've been struggling to beat them since October, and I've won one game, and I wasn't really playing my army exactly right when I, when I won. So, and I play the, I play at least one game, one game every, like probably two or three games a month against them, and I haven't won yet. Yeah. So I'm Jay. Um, I'm the uh, organizer for the Hampton Road Atlanteans. Um, I've been in War Machine for a long time. I started. Uh, Right before escalation in 2004, um, I was a press ganger. Um, I've been in on several podcasts related to various uh, things before. The most recent one was Charge and Spike for Warcaster for Privateer Press. Um, so uh, my current uh, obsession and longtime obsession is Kador. Started with them. I've played them every edition since. 
I'm currently proxying um, Winter Corpse, getting ready for the army box to come out, as I said. Um, trying to figure out what I need and how much of stuff I need and if I really do need to buy uh, almost full FA of stuff like uh, AJ is for uh, Orgoth. <laughs> and I think it's I think I'm pretty happy with two of everything. Uh, for the most part, I'll, I'll probably need a few more jacks and uh, maybe three units of Arcanists. But um, overall, and that, but only for 100 points, really. Um, I also have Grimkin, Infernals, uh, Protectorate of Menoth, Convergence, um, Signar. I have, in Mark Three, I could play at least two armies of every faction, all 15 factions. Jeez, um, I've a lot. been pairing, <laughs> yeah. I've been pairing down a little bit since they announced Mark Four. I probably can play maybe uh, a 75 point army of the eight of the factions right now. And for the most part, I have I have about 2k models, uh, privateer press models owned, and about 50 percent of that's painted. So doing better than me. So. <laughs> I've been at it for longer, probably. That is true. That is true. Uh, there was something I was going to... I literally just had in my head. Completely forgot it. Oh, well. If it comes back to me, it comes back to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, intros are good. Welcome. Welcome to the Frostcast. Hope it's not too Thank cold. You. Uh, it's been pretty cold the last couple of days. I know. It's been nice here. I, like, I It got warm for a few days. I rode the motorcycle yeah. to work, and I was like, all right, that's, that's nice. Let's get back to being cold. <laughs> Um, clearly the cold has made AJ's family sick. They got the weak mm. genes. They always get sick. And well, having three kids in, like, daycare and school and, like, <laughs> two of them being 14 months does not help at all. No, I'm no. gonna blame, I'm gonna blame your genetics. It's you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. Um, well. but we can get into the app launch. That's been the big thing that happened this week. Mm. Um, I did officially, I learned you had to go to the app store and update it fully because I thought it just updated. But I did that, and it seems like both of you did that. What are you guys mm -hmm. thinking of the new Legion? If you've taken a look at it. You want to go first? You go first, AJ. Okay. I'll respond. So I took a little bit, I took a little bit of a look at it. I'm not a Legion mm -hmm. player, but I kind of perused it. Um, I was excited to see Lilith because yeah. she is my favorite legion caster i know everybody loves thagrosh but i know the only real caster i've played more than once in legion was lilith and i really enjoyed her so i was happy to see her come back never was a big fan of the like the hillum guys the helium thing beasts they just were off-putting to me when i met them the nephilims yeah that's it yeah, yeah. they were just off-putting to me so i never even thought about them at all but I mean, I guess they're good <laughs> enough. But I did, I did. What I did like to see is I saw Angelus made it into that list, which was nice. Which I know mm -hmm. that's one of their power beasts. And then your Rob, who plays at your store, now yeah. has basically six casters to play with that list that he has instead yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the only thing that's missing is the is one of the solos that he plays with. But yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I was. That's the that's the biggest thing that I was excited to see is a lot of the overlap of the beasts because I know as troll player, I was like, oh man, they put all the good troll beasts into this one. What are they gonna do with the other one? But now I see, it looks like a lot of the the beasts are gonna be basically, what was that cadre kind of esque models where yeah, they're gonna yeah. work for both sides, which I was really happy to see, and I think a lot of people are. So that was what my take was the main take. Yeah, it seems like seems like a core. Uh, core section of the beasts are going to be in both prime lists, which I think is really interesting. Um, and then they're sort of going to specialize with some things. So like a bunch of the generic lights weren't in the first troll list. So like axers aren't there and the storm troll, it's just the winter lights. And so you probably won't see the winter lights and the, the rock and, and those kind of beasts. And you'll see all of the storm troll, the, the, the non Northkin uh, lights instead, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, so for me, I'm I'm not much of a Legion player either. I have played against them a lot since Mark One and Mark Two. I had uh, one of my the first guys I started playing against was Legion player all through Mark One, and 
Um, I played Mark II and Mark III, um, and now Mark IV here in Norfolk uh, for a bunch. And so I've I've run against and played against uh, Legion a lot. Robbie's been playing um, uh, Legion since I've known him. And um, I really think that um, this the the casters that kind of surprised me. Like I, I I was pretty sure Carissa was going to be in there. Seeing Vale and Lilith are both were both uh, a little bit of a surprise. I think Lilith one is great. Um, she definitely uh, adds a an interesting ranged aspect to the uh, to the armies, and she's. Um, she changed a little bit, but not so much that she's a different caster than she used to be. Um, Carissa is a lot more... Um, I think she's she lost some of her oomph, but she also kept the core of her same powers and the stuff that they replaced... That she replaced, like, three spells in her list, and the stuff they replaced it with adds some interest and difference to her. You know, giving her dash is pretty strong for... it makes it uh, uh, advantageous to take uh, some of the infantry that she didn't normally play with. She was much more of a beast caster before. Um, but her feet's still there. Her uh, Calling Flames is still there. And they gave her um, Hallowed Avenger, which I think is really cool, which is a, a spell I've been playing around with in Winter Corp because it's on uh, Kador's uh, rack, which is basically um, if a warrior model dies in the warcaster's control range, then um, uh, a model in their battle group can um, move and uh, make a basically like a vengeance move and attack uh, in the maintenance phase, which is pretty cool. Very cool. I am, I'm the one who actually owns Legion, I think, between the three of us for the most part. Mm -hmm. Lejay, do you own Legion? Um, I uh, had them, and I, it's one of the armies I sold off at the beginning of Mark IV. Okay, so I have, then I guess I'm the only one who has Legion here. Uh, I don't know that much about them because I don't play them that much, but I will say I do love seeing Azrael in the list just because yeah. it's a fantastic model. I don't know if it's good or not. I love that model. Like some of the some of the Legion beasts just look phenomenal, and I'm glad to see them on this one too. Yeah, expect to see them a bunch in our him a bunch in our meta because that was sort of the uh, between when we were ending Mark Three and going to Mark Four, both uh, Robbie and Christina um, both picked him up like right before we went to Mark Four, and he disappeared. So they'll both probably be chomping at the bit to play him next week. That's awesome. So that'll be a fun. He is a awesome looking model. If spellcaster's ranged weapon gains snipe. Oh, okay. Pretty fun animus. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting that they chose to give him that instead of um, whatever. I forget what he had previously, but. Um, both him and the bolt thrower have uh, far strike, which is interesting. It it sort of makes it so that you, um, I think we're going to see Azrael uh, primarily and the bolt thrower less, even though the bolt thrower um, is traditionally a good a good beast to have, and it's it's it has a uh, thunderbolt. So when it hits a model, it pushes a D three directly away from attack on a critical hit. So it's knocked down. So, I mean. It's uh, a range 12, pow 14, range 15, pow 14 that can push models around and possibly knock them down. It's pretty strong, but I think Azrael is just a much better version weapon. of it. I mean, yeah, he's a pow 17, a pow 20 on her feet turn with continuous fire at range 10, range 13 with the animus. So pretty yeah. crazy. That's pretty. Yeah, he is, he does cost a lot, though. He is 15 points. He is. Um, yeah. So he's more than an Angelus, which is their their big damage dealer for the most part. Yeah. So. But yeah, so you guys like what it came. It seems like they're gonna um, like as AJ was saying, and you guys were talking about that. They're gonna keep some of the a lot of the jack. I think that's gonna happen with Rhett too when they get their second army because there's a few like jacks that just didn't make it. Like the Hypnos mm -hmm. didn't come. The three, the Banshee, the Sphinx, and the oh, it's the third one out of that new box. The Damon. The Daemon and then maybe the Eternity will come in and those will replace mm -hmm. like the Imperiatus. Uh, I don't know if the Discordia is going to make it into Mark IV because it just never got used that much. But maybe they bring it to make it get used. Um, it depends on if they have um, Osram in the, is one of the casters because uh, uh, Discordia is Osram's character jack. Ozzy? I thought that no, Hypnos is Ozzy's jack. I thought. Is it Hypnos? Yeah, okay. Hypnos is the one with the ghost shot. That's their. That's... What's what's what's, uh, whose is that jack? I want to say it's. 
Let me look this up because I don't remember. <laughs> I, I own the Discordia upgrade pack, but I have yeah. never oh, it's, used. It's... Go to uh, back. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head. Jack. Discordia. Discordia is with Ron. Uh, Ron, okay. So, then, maybe... yeah, so you're, you'll probably see Discordia because it's very likely that Ron will be in that list. He was in my predictions. Because I my my three that are coming are Gareth, Ron, and Thyron. Those are the three casters I think are going to make it. So maybe Hypnos sits in the back and they bring Discordia up. The because it's Mage Hunters um, and not uh, um, a House Guard Defenders uh, list. I think you're probably right. You think it's going to be Gareth one or Gareth two? Uh. I think two. Yeah, I, I would agree. That was AJ's two, prediction well. was Garrus two, not the shooter one, the melee one. So, though, I mean, it's Lilith one where Lilith two or Lilith three would be a lot stronger choices. I mean, they couldn't do Lilith three because she's a huge base right now. But um, Lilith one of the three is probably the, the, the weakest of the three. Yeah. It'd be so interesting. it's possible that they'll do, they'll do uh, uh, one instead. Yeah, is there now? I know next is Circle, right? And that's we are next. The one we know is coming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Secret Masters and yeah, cool. Not Secret Masters. It's 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 based on the name Secret Masters, but it's not Secret Masters. It's something else. I'll look it up real quick. Okay. It's hidden in the the Circle Devourers Host Beasts. So, Aiden, what do you think? Your since your one prediction possibly might not come and Grim might not be coming. Who do you think is going to come? Is your, your backup was Gunborn for him. Is that still true? Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Gunborn. I'm going to go with... Uh, uh, it was Magic oh. 3, Kalindra, and Gunborn 3, and Gunbjorn. Yeah, I think they're going to go with Gunborn, but I don't know if they're going to bring Gunborn 2 because he was problematic. I think they might just fold and go with Gunborn 1. So I, would gonna... agree with, I would agree with that, I think. Though... Is, aren't they isn't it based on the champions isn't it based on the it's not the gun list it's the heroes list so it's united krills it's which united krills okay we don't know so mm -hmm. what i'm thinking is uh like pigs and and um trolls so they're probably going to have a smattering so i assume there's going to be warriors mm -hmm. probably champions no scaldy um I don't see the Barrage team making it just because mm -hmm. they were problematic and Mark III yep. as well. Um, so probably, you know, Scatter Gunners, maybe mm -hmm. um, the other ones that have the rep, the chain guns. Yep. And then probably, or they could go with the Highwaymen route because Scouts, they got a little buff at the end of Mark III, but they were never played. So mm -hmm. I could see them making it in as like a smattering of like, hey, here's you know, a little bit of the, the scouts, here's a little bit of the warriors, the champions, the pigs, mm -hmm. and then, you know, the scatter gunners, so it's a little smattering. And I think mm -hmm. if that's true, then they bring in Gumbjorn 1, because I think they're going to probably get rid of the problematic ones, but that's also bad news for Rhett and House Elowir, because those guys are problematic too, so sorry to rain mm -hmm. on that parade. It's it's fine. It's kind of expected. Like I like that. Like I'm putting Thyron in my list. I just hopes if House Eul are coming. And I hope and for all the red players who bought all the new red models, which was like mid uh, when when did that come out? Was that last winter? Uh yeah, because you were still here. So it had to have been end of twenty twenty one. I remember I think it was twenty twenty one, yeah. I remember coming to World's Best and one of the guys there was like, dude, I just bought all these new red models. They're great. And I'm like, oh, they look cool. I will go get some. And I picked up a Warden Executioner because it looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then uh, over the summer, I bought two more and another unit of full Warden. So I had 10 Wardens now. <laughs> yep. Yep. That basically uh, uh, JR, the guy that plays uh, that, I've been, that you met today. Yeah. That um I uh that plays Rhett for us. Uh, he basically was has the ten wardens and the the two to three solos and Falshir and Thyron. He played Thyron a lot more. It sounds like than you did, but I never touched Thyron to be honest. Uh, he looks cool. Like back when I started playing, which I think was mm -hmm. Mark Two was 
it got its battle box, two player battle box. Mm-hmm. Um, Thyron looked really cool, but he what he was like going to be my next caster I bought because I started with Ozzy, but mm-hmm. I just never got around to it. And then when I got into it, Falshir was a thing, and I fell in love. Gotcha. Yeah, we had a lot of games with Falshir. We had a lot of games with Falshir. I was getting there. I was learning her very slowly. Yeah, yeah. yeah I faced I faced Falshir a bunch too. Falshir was his his favorite caster as well. She was just so threatening. It was. She was disgusting in the beginning, <laughs> and she got her better not even a nerve yeah it was like a side grade but yeah. slight upgrade and i'm like what are they thinking maybe they just knew that mark four was coming and they just kind of had fun with red for a little bit she got better but simpler yes yeah because in the cid she was pretty nuts <laughs> just run through the wall kill the caster yeah <laughs> So the the circle army that's coming by the way is called Secret Dominion. Secret Dominion. Okay. And that's it's going to be druids and woads. And a little bit of living beasts. There's like uh, two satyrs, um, the primal warp wolf and the stalker warp wolf, um, and a, like all the griffins are in it. Very cool. I know a friend who is. Hey, I, I we did a couple of test games. Um, he was thinking about getting into it, and he wanted to play the furries because whatever his personal reasons for playing the furries are. Yep. But that's what he played. I tried to teach him as much as I could with how little I know, and he liked him. But I told him to wait because of Mark Four. So, I don't know what it is, but I'm super excited to play them in Unlimited for some reason. I haven't played them since Mark Two, but I'm super excited to get Wolf Sworn on the table and mix a bunch of Tharn into it and uh, be able to take, you know, pieces of different of the different lists and mix them together. Okay, again. that'd be fun. I, I, I'm definitely excited to get some unlimited games in as more of the models come out, like more of the caster options come out. So Did we talk about unlimited and how just crazy and more Wild West it was than everyone ever thought it would be? I'm not tracking. Are you, Jay, do you know what's going on with that? I haven't been looking at unlimited a lot. I've been just painting this week. I mean, it's, I mean, it's everything, kind of. Well, okay, so, a couple things, right? <laughs> He's like, okay, here we go. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's pretty out there. Um, I don't like how the, I mean, so, like, first thing I saw was somebody that I know that uh-huh. plays Circle, and the Primal, or, yeah, the Primal Archon is mm-hmm. not in Circle, so that's weird. Um, that's very weird. Other things... You know, like, I expected. Um, I don't know. I, I think you're right. I think Unlimited is actually going to be a lot of fun because mm-hmm. it's going to be Mark 3.5, essentially. Actually, and, yeah. and I think that's going to bring a lot of, like, extra stuff to it. Also, like, I like that, you know, for I don't know if this is true, but if you take a look at some of the stuff, like, you can choose, like, mercenary warcasters with your yeah. normal warcasters. And I'm like, huh? But then so, you go down the list and yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. So 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 that's sort of what I'm where I'm, I'm. So I've been playing around with it a little bit, and one of the first things I noticed when I went in is I, because like I'm really looking forward to being able to build like like I was saying, uh, circle, and uh, there's some Kador Mark One and Mark Two lists that I want to bring back that I'm really excited to be able to do once they add in uh, a bunch of the the Kador stuff for unlimited. Um, but the the craziest thing I noticed right off the bat when I went in is that you have the list of all the ca- of like the faction casters and then all the merc and minion casters that will work for your faction. But then there's no for the non mercenaries unlimited list. There's no merc or minion beasts. But then when you build the list, you can add faction jacks to the mercenary war casters and you can add faction beasts to the hordes uh, mercenary um, warlocks. And so, and it doesn't say that they're friendly faction, but I mean, I know that uh, it's an app and it's not super smart. And so maybe that's why. And I'm really wondering if we're going to get access to the Merc and Minion beasts in the faction lists. Um, Because being able to like take a 75 point army and run like... uh, the list that I've been sort of playing around with in Mercs is Barnabas 2 with uh, Rulik and Privateer models. Um, 
and having him being able to feed himself because his thing is you know, sacrifice living and undead models to replenish his fury and give him or give him corpse tokens. And so he can like boost him. You can have this nasty Rurik uh, uh, hammer, hammer dwarf army um, that's supported by all the, the Rurik support and our an artillery that gets Barnabas to the middle and then Barnabas pops his feet and does his craziness and charges himself up and then just annihilates the middle of the enemy army. So it's pretty silly. And if I can do that with like Kador or Signar or Protectorate, that would be nuts. That's kind of what I was going with too when I saw that. I was like, wait a minute, is yeah. this real life? Yeah. And so I'm wondering if if we're going to get some more clarification this week with Unlimited about, you know, like what, like, are they going to remove the Warlock, the Warcasters and Warlocks? Because there's no way to play a two-caster game, at least at least that we haven't seen so far. Uh, maybe that's something that'll come in the app, because that's like something you could do back in Mark 1, because you used to play two-caster games at 1,000 points, which was is effectively 100 points now. And you could take a mercenary caster in their battle group as your second caster if you wanted to. I don't know if that's something either of you have ever seen before. I always thought the two caster thing was like, I know when they first came out with the Colossals, they pushed like this big, the big games. And that's unbound. when you, yeah, unbound, you could do two casters if your opponent was okay with it kind of thing. And then you would each have two casters. And that was how that worked. So in Mark 2 and Mark 3 at, at 125 points, you could play two casters, hmm. which is a huge game. And I've, I've actually been in some of those games before. Um, but like in in uh, Mark One, um, when you played in tournaments, oftentimes uh, if it was like a multi-day tournament at a convention, you'd play 500, which was like effectively was like 50 points in Mark Three, and then or 75 point 750 points, which is effectively 75 points in Mark Three. Um, it's probably a little bit smaller armies than either of those for the for the 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 qualification days and then the finals would be played a thousand points and basically a hundred point game and you play two casters for the like the final rounds interesting okay so this kind of leads into like the siege stuff and i'm assuming we're going to have multiple casters for the siege so yeah um probably uh depending on the point value i know we're scheduled or the big one is scheduled for saturday evening um he's actually running uh four events throughout the weekend with the, with the siege but we are the okay. like, main event on saturday nice so. now someone and, in the tried and true discord did mess message me um they do have more orgoth they have that two they got two army boxes oh so yeah so we were we were planning on the expansion boxes being out but since he's got two we're maybe make two to 225 maybe with 375 point lists or three casters against whatever Kador has. Um, and I, I will be there on Saturday, so, and I will have my Kador with me, so. Cool. And I'll yeah. probably have 100 points plus of Kador by then. Yeah, it looks like we should have plenty of Kador and plenty of Orgoth then. Cool, I'll, I'll message him to confirm, but yeah, then, but yeah, that should be, that kind of sums that up, sweet. And maybe if we're lucky, we get some, we get the X-Packs. Yeah, maybe, maybe they'll be there at Bokor, who knows. Yeah, and I'll just bring my whole air all night. It, it sounds like, it sounds like from what Adam was saying on the group that they're going to try and have them out at the beginning of April, if uh, if not, they said if not sooner. So, um, so you'll probably have maybe two or three weeks to get them get for us to get them put together and painted. How many models are in the X pack? Um, Hang on. Uh, so it's it's three it's three units, two solos, one of them a character solo, and your caster. Engine. And depending on the depending uh, on the units, what's in the units. Right, so, like, so like so uh, like for Kador, it's uh, well Kador actually has they have two units and a bunch more solos in theirs. They have the man. Uh, no, they have three units. They have the uh, the the mana wars are in there. The um, the shock trooper pikemen are in there so that's six um there's the um the winner the uh sniper team which is three more guys so that's nine their attachment which is ten and then i have a large base artillery solo 
the character model and the mechanic solo. So um, 10, 13, 14, including the caster. Okay, and then Orgoth has the three birds, the three guys with clubs, five looks like different kind of reavers, mm -hmm. and then the caster and two solos. Mm -hmm. How many of those are you getting, AJ? Two? I'll probably get two expansion boxes, two 80 millimeters, yeah. That should be, in like a couple weeks, that should be doable. I should be able to do that. That'll be cutting it close, but... Yeah, and assuming the cater ones come out, I'll be getting two. I'll be, I'll have one starter box that I'm getting next week when they come out, and I'll be getting two expansions. And I really hope, I was really hoping the 80 millimeter bases that would be out, but um, I'll be getting two of those as well eventually. Cool. Okay. I really hope we get the birds on the table. I think that would be really cool for the siege yeah. app and just like fly up to the thing. Oh, they're disgusting. I play. I played against them on uh, Thursday. Not even like rules wise, just thematically, like the flying yeah, birds yeah. flying up to the siege walls and taking Kaldor and throwing them off somehow. Like that would be cool. <laughs> well, I just have this vision of like Return of the Kings when the the wraith yep. come in and they're just picking up dudes and throwing them off. That's my vision with the birds. <laughs> that that's a really good vision because you know it's a stealth unit, it's super fast, and they're yeah. That's... Now, would it be cool if we did them where they like came in from the side of the edge and they just swooped in and just like they they yeah. had. Might be a little strong, but it might help with some of like the balancing. I think I think you should do some sort of because of the size of the Orgoth army, there should definitely be some ambushers in some in some way. Or somewhat so as an option to option to do ambushing. Interesting. I like that. I think that might be fun. I don't know if it'd be balanced, but Yeah. I mean you guys are gonna have like twenty five percent more army, right, than the Kador? We haven't got that far yet yeah. uh, i tested the first i tested a scenario last night with it mm -hmm. and uh it i made some suggestions on the rules and the changes and what i thought and we'll see mm -hmm. how that pans out well awesome. that's what i'll say good enough but that can that kind of sums up all the new stuff now i know um in the tnt discord someone was asking about your cotor which is kind of useful because we're going to go into the gameplay for what you and me played jay this week do you want to go over your list real quick and i'll go over mine and we'll kind of get into how the game played out sure i can do that uh so we played a 75 point game today for a coin from the king of coin league um the orgoth and, coin to be more precise yep, orgoth coin to be more precise so i played um iliari boris Yuk, who is the starter box caster for um the winter corpse um, he had, uh, he has two spell rack spells. Um, he had Avenging Force and Superiority. I think that from the Kador spell rack, you'll probably never see me not leave home with, without Superiority. It's just, uh, it's too good of a spell. Um, plus two speed, plus two mat, uh, plus two defense, and can't be knocked down for a Warjack in my army. Um, with, uh, Valeri, I think it's, like, speed, it can run 15 inches on turn one or something like that with all the, the, the things that can stack together. Uh, if it has a uh, the uh, aggressive cortex, so it has basically it's escort superiority and um, escort superiority and um, uh, 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 heavy boiler, and so it's like speed. It so it can run uh, it can run 15 inches, yeah, because it's uh, it's speed 10 effectively when it runs. Which is crazy. And then Avenging Force is sort of like uh, you kill a warrior model in my control range. Um, and uh, like I was saying earlier about the Legion, the Legion caster that has it. Um, and uh, I get a, a vengeance move with a jack and can make an attack. Um, so then I had a Dire Wolf and two Great Bears. Uh, the Dire Wolf is basically uh, what I consider my standard Dire Wolf. It's a shield guard uh, bombard with a scrap saw. Um, and then I've got sort of two great bears that I play with a lot. I had one that has aggressive with the battle mace, which is a two inch pound 19 that has um, um, uh, crit smite and beat back. Um, and then a uh, blasting fist, which is uh, uh, a crit knockdown, pound 17 crit knockdown, one inch melee. Um, 
aggressive cortex gives me heavy boiler so i get the plus two speed when i run and i can run and charge for free so it gets uh five melee attacks on the charge effectively which is great um i also uh run a great bear with the slammer head uh the slammer head gives um gladiator and um uh gladiator and um the grand slam ability that the titan gladiators have for scorn so they can slam for free and model slam to move at plus two. Um, and the gladiator cortex does an addition, uh, does plus two damage for power attacks. Um, so then, uh, and another thing that the slammer does, Jack uh, cortex does is it gives it follow up. So if I slam a model away, um, I can follow up behind it, um, which is pretty strong. Uh, it plays great with the Battle Mace, which is the weapon that the, the two inch pound 19 with uh, a beat back and crit smite, because I can follow up from the, the head of the hammer of the, of the Battle Mace um, if it slams the model away. And then I've got a um, Battle Axe, which is a POW uh, 18 um, with uh, crit amputate. Um, for the rest of my list, I have Alexi Queen of the Damned. Uh, she's basically in the list to uh, remove from play troublesome enemies. Um, if I'm playing against Dusk or something with Undead, I can sort of control the Undead. And she also has two ways to return mod return models to units in the army. So she's a little bit of recursion for the army. Um, I have a battle mechanic. Uh, he repairs and has... Um, he's a, a, a jack hunter and has two ranged attacks. Um, I have... Uh, the character solo, the the ex Grey Lord um, Volkova, she's in the recent, she's in part three of the recent fluff that uh, uh, was put out about the Orgoth invasion of Kador. Um, she's uh, basically a, a toolbox model. She can add, uh, give a model, um, Eyeless Sight, and um, uh, magical attacks. Uh, she can. Um, she has Battle Wizard, so she she has a a pretty powerful. She has a POW thirteen crit freeze melee weapon, um, and then she has Horfrost, which is a crit AOE uh, stationary spell, um, and uh, ancillary attack, which lets a Jack attack again effectively. Um, so then I have um, two Winter Corpse officers. They are sort of your bread and butter support support for Winter Corpse. Um, they have three battle plans, um, March, which is path Pathfinder for a model unit, um, Press the Advantage, which is um, Swift Hunter for a model unit, um, and then they have uh, um, Stand Your Ground, which is Set Defense for a model unit, and then Dodge, Feign Death, or have a Weapon Master Melee, a Gun, or Pathfinders, and are tough. So they're, they're pretty great. Are, so, like, uh, if you heard AJ talk last week, AJ, you're um, the Orgoth uh, unit leader that you run, like, two or three of in your army. I forget what it's called. The commander? The commander. He's sort of like the equivalent of the commander for my army, but instead of having... He doesn't have tactician like your guy does, unfortunately. I need to pick up tactician. It's good. Um, Valeri, who's my... The caster that comes in the... Uh, uh, Expansion box has that as one of his battle plans. Uh, so then I have two units of Arcanist, which are my uh, Jack support. They have uh, uh, Empower, Arcane Reinforcement, and Razor Wind, which is a range 10 PAL 12 spray um, magic attack. They're sort of my base uh, Jack support, and they can give a, uh, a Jack magical attacks. Um, I have two units of them in this army because there's three war jacks. I normally run one when there's one or two jacks. Um, I have a unit of the shock trooper pikemen, which are so the shock troopers are one of the new. Um, they're sort of like a cross between assault commandos and um, man of wars um, from Mark Three and before. Um, they're a five wound. Um, defense 12, either armor 15 or 16, depending on the model. So there's a, a shotgun unit um, that's called the, the uh, Shock Trooper Gunners, and then there's this unit, the Shock Trooper Pikemen. Um, the cool thing about them is they have resistance to fire, cold, and blast. Um, and the Pikemen have uh, 
uh, CMA and the gunners have, um, they can stand still and shoot twice. They can stand still and aim and shoot twice. Dual attack. Um, I like the pikemen a little bit better because they have one higher armor, so they're 12-16s, and they have shield wall. So while in base-to-base -base with each other, they're 12-18s. Um, and they have a range 2 POW-15 crit armor-piercing melee weapon, which is crazy. And it appears they have a POW-10 shield, which I've been forgetting to use. All right, um, so then the last thing in my army is I have a unit of the Winter Corps Infantry. It's basic, they're basically your standard Winter Corps guy. They have uh, rifles, which are range 10, POW-11, um, and CRA. And then and there's they have two... I've been playing with the Rocketeer, which is a range 8... Um, 14-7 uh, uh, AOE-2 Blast that has um, Jack Hunter. And then I play with Breakthrough, Hit and Run, Old Faithful, Power Swell, and True Inspiration, and that's sort of my standard um, command card base. That's my army. You guys there? All right. Yeah. <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> We lose him? I'm still here. Yeah. My bad, I was muted. Yeah, yeah, you're good, you're good, man. And feel free to cut out as much of that as my explanation as you want. <laughs> I don't normally edit things, so we're just gonna leave it. Okay. So whoever, all the listeners, they have a full understanding of how Cotor works, if they didn't already. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you for the big explanation. Do appreciate mm -hmm. it. Um, for me, no. I, Retribution, Legions of Dawn, Magister Helena is the caster, so Jack caster. Way kind of Jack heavy. Um, I played it last week against the Legion. Played it this week against Kador. I still like the list a lot. Um, this week I did change it up a little bit. I have two Hydras, two Manicores, so just four Jacks, no Hamira. Two Dongor Sentinel, the Sk Skyers, so the ones that give uh, Grievous Wounds and walk through stuff. Mm -hmm. Two units of the Arcanist, so heal them up and give them some focus. And then one unit of Stormfall Archers, which was the new unit for me to learn this week. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, pretty simple. It was very, like, there wasn't a lot on the table. It's kind of just run up, do your thing. But that can get into the actual game itself. I won the dice roll, I went first. Um, terrain was pretty even. We played with a guard tower. That was cool. Mm -hmm. Didn't get used too much. It was there, it looked cool. Um, so for my, I did my best to keep your uh, your unit of Stormfall Archers out of it. He did. He, I was like half an inch away. Like it was closer than that. Like I was so close to getting there. Um, that just comes down to positioning. But like, yeah. they did their job a little bit, but not as much as they could have. I will say that much, mm -hmm. and we'll get into that as we go through the turns. My turn one was Sires activated, went up five, and then made it where they could walk through stuff. Arcanus acted activated gave a bunch of focus out moved in front of the jacks jacks then activated ran up as far as they could and then helena activated moved up through some water and um just pop rhythm of war and deceleration and then jacks moved up three more inches and then i was kind of right there in the middle of the field already that kind of went into your turn yep so i basically ran up with most of my stuff um, I stayed just out of his 10-inch threat um, with all of his jacks, except for a unit of the um, the Winter Guard Infantry, which I pushed up um, behind the tower to try and get them into the tower. Um, my caster moved up uh, and uh, did some shooting. Um, I tried to get my... I sort of ran my... Um, uh, the war dog up that has the uh, bombard, and I was just short of being able to uh, shoot at the front unit of the front model of his uh, stormfalls. Um, stormfalls. If I'd been able to hit them, I probably would have been able to um, do um, get two or three of them with the blast, which was which would have been great. Um, but I was just short, and so my caster had to step up and snipe out the closest one, which has stopped him from getting into the into the watchtower. And forcing them to sort of move a different direction, um, but then the rest of my army just sort of ran up and got into cover, uh, got in position to be able to sort of counter his next turn. 
and then going into my next turn, I moved up a little bit. I knew I was gonna get charged. I probably could have stepped back, stepped up and stepped back kind of thing, and I'll get to that mm -hmm. in a second. Moved up, I kind of just shot a bunch. I missed a lot, unfortunately, with my jacks. Like, I just whiffed like three straight shots with my Nicor, and I was like, thanks. Uh, Stormfall I mean, Archers killed almost that whole unit, minus the one guy. Yeah, there's one guy hiding behind the tower that you couldn't see or get to or with the, with the blast, but you killed the other four of them. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Winter Corpse Infantry. Yeah, and then my Mana Core tried to go around and shoot him, and then literally it was like, stared at him, shot the wall in front of him, and then was like, I missed. <laughs> like, that's yeah. how that played out. Um, I where This is where I start, I probably positioned wrong. I forgot to Rhythm a War at the end of that turn, where I could have stepped back and made you have to come to me more. Yep. And that was probably my biggest misstep in the game was forgetting that rhythm of war and stepping back and making you stepping out of your ranges. I mean, you did feet and you did. Uh, yes. So at the end of the did, turn, uh, power up all your almost all your jacks had three focus. I think only one of them one of them had two, and the other three had three. Yeah. So that was the bet. I did remember to focus, AJ. You'd be proud. <laughs> I remember to feet. Um, so I feeded. I think I healed because he did a little bit of damage to one of the jacks, mm -hmm. healed two damage, whatever, uh, plus three armor, and then every jack had three focus on it, just about. And Except I, for the one mana core on the, on the far side. Yeah, and I face tanked everything. Like, <laughs> oh my lord, did I... That yeah, was, I, I was went, a lot of damage. I went hard, because he forgot to, to step back, I went hard into him, I sent all three of my jacks charged in, uh, my uh, Iron Fang... Um, the shock trooper pikeman charged in. I shot him with stuff. Um, my caster uh, got a, one crit armor pierced off with his with his his gun. Um, I think I got one armor pierce off on the pikeman, um, and I managed to kill one of the one of the heavies on the right hand side in the zone. Yeah, you killed the um, Hydra that I put up to be yeah. baited because I knew I was going to get hit, so I put a Hydra in front of the Mana Core so the I, Hydra I would killed, die first. I, I killed the Hydra. I did a bunch of damage to the Hydra that was sort of in the middle of the table between my caster and the uh, the, the Dire Wolf charging in. I didn't, I didn't quite do enough damage to, to make it completely ineffective. And then I um, put superiority on the uh, aggressive um, jack on the side and charged the the man slammed the man no it's not the it wasn't the aggressive it was the uh, the gladiator cortex and slammed him out of the zone and was able to stick in the zone Ooh. and score that zone at the uh, let it be known the, he the also slammed this jack like seven inches he walked up yep. and just sent this jack flying yeah I rolled a five <laughs> plus two and I followed up so that I was exactly two inches away from it with my melee weapon um, but still in the zone yeah um, it was perfect able to, I was able to score the, score the zone so um uh, and did a whole bunch of damage to it I didn't completely knock it out so at the end of turn two it was uh, two to one. He had a, his flag, I had my flag, and I had the, the zone with the guard tower in it. Um, the other zone was contested and our objectives were alive. And then um, I had killed a jack. Um, there was a jack that was behind it that was fully healthy. I had done some damage to the jack in the middle and a bunch of damage to the jack on the left flank. Yep. Or my left flank, your right flank. Yeah. Uh, and then going into my turn, I put Unstoppable on Stormfall Archers to get them out of melee range, which was weird, but it worked because I um, tried to shoot some of the guys in the back, killed out some of his supports. Um, then they were kind of just kind of floating in the middle. Uh, mm -hmm. That opened up the... Then I used Helena, came up, did Hand of Destruction on your big jack that was in front of me, mm -hmm. full health. And then I just laid into that with my Mana Core, killed it. That was cool. And then the other jack on the right, the Manticore, stood up. And like that's not he didn't stand up. He just kind of got back in your face, mm -hmm. but he didn't he did he missed two attacks, and then the two attacks he bought didn't do a lot of damage. So it was kind of like he kind of just slaps you with a wet glove. It was like really it. Yeah, I think I took like seven damage total. Yeah, it wasn't great for me. And then the Hydra in the middle was hit back like even less. Like it just didn't do anything. Um, so they were kind of just like stuck there, getting in the way, contesting. Mm -hmm. 
Um, didn't do that much to recoup. So it kind of was just like a float. It just nothing happened for much, aside from me killing that Jack. And that was yeah, like... You did, you did kill the aggressive Jack, which was, which was tough. Yeah, but then going into your turn, this is where you kind of take it away. Yeah, I had some, some really lucky damage rolls. Um, I uh, was able to... Uh, one of the pikemen was able to get a, a crate armor pierce, and between him and the other two, they um, and a little bit of shooting, support shooting, I was able to kill one, the jet, the other jack on the right hand side, my right hand side. Um, I was, and between the my the two jacks that I had left and my my caster shooting, I was able to get. Uh, I think I knocked the one in the center down, and the one on the left flank was at like five health. Yeah. And then I was I was also able to kill the jack that was in the center because only had five damage boxes with it without my jack and so my jack was able to move up and kill your two solos that were in the back and stop you scoring that flag yep so then um at the end of my turn three i think i went up uh it was like five three at the end of my turn three yeah you were up no it was five two because i didn't score anything because yeah five, you're right five two and then you were uh you had like one jack with five health um, and a bunch of a bunch of uh, units, your caster, and uh, like a solo. Yeah, I didn't have much at that point, and that's why I put my hand across the table and said, "Good game." Yeah, it's so, a great game. It was. It was fun. Um, AJ, I sent you a couple pictures of the list, and you were saying kind yeah, of what uh, um, of the list in the game. You were saying the same thing. You should. I should have played to her. the advantage. The disadvantage of Cador is their speed. I should have played to that more. And. I didn't use Larry's feet very well, but it, his, his feet sort of makes up a little bit for that because his feet basically lets me, if I kill a model with a model in my battle group, I can move uh, two inches and make an attack. And so that lets me sort of uh, probe a little bit farther with him, um, but I didn't do a very good job of killing things with those attacks on yeah. my feet turn. But overall, it was a pretty. Even, I'd say it's a pretty even game. If I had positioned better, it would have been a. I probably would have lasted. There would have been another turn or two to decide what really happened. Yeah, looking at your list when and we talked about this at the end of the game. Looking at your list at the beginning of the game, I was really surprised you weren't running sentinels. Sentinels because sentinels have been the bane of my existence since like the <laughs> Mark Three. Um, and you sort of said that you were playing a jack heavy list and you didn't really need them. And I was I was so, I was surprised that you that uh, how effective the this is the first time I've played them in Mark, really played against Rhett in Mark IV, and how, how effective the um, being able to reduce damage by five by spending focus on the jacks was really, it was really a strong ability. And the only issue I see with it is that, it, that you're not really able, because you have to hit back, um, you're not really able to um, maintain that focus on them very well. Um, I think that one of the things you could have done strong, better in the game was focus on using the, 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 the focus on your jacks and maybe your casters, because you left a lot of focus on your casters, caster turn to turn in which she wasn't doing a lot, wasn't doing a lot. Um, if you had allocated that focus and then used your support guys to replenish it after they'd attacked, you would have been able to continue to soak more and more damage. Mm. Yeah. You, yeah. You, ended, you ended up sitting on like five or six focus every turn. Um, after you, after the jack sort of started deploying, and so if you had been mm -hmm. allocating that focus, um, and you were hiding behind your objective, so I couldn't see you anyways. Um, you've been allocating that focus out to the jacks instead of using the uh, the arcanist. arcanist to to the arcanists to supply them so they could could hit and beat and beat on guys and use that to to replenish them after they'd activated, so they had the the focus to spend to reduce the damage rolls, I think your jacks would have survived a lot longer. Hmm. Okay. I think we had talked about that a little bit, AJ. Yeah, I kept telling you that that's, that's probably the way to play that list is where, you know, they charge up for one, maybe she gives each of them like one or two more, and then she just kind of hides, and then after they go in, you reload them up with like one or two focus from your Arcanist, so they mm -hmm. are absorbing like five to 15 damage. You know, yep. that's huge. So that's yeah. and, and on the feet turn, it was, I mean, with the, the plus three armor and most of them having three focus, I mean, I was lucky to get the one heavy jack that I did get, and the rest of them I didn't, I did some significant damage, but that's only because I'm playing Kador and they're like Tau 19s and Tau 17s, and your base armor is 18, but 
Um, I still didn't kill them, and they were still effective. And did you... you have? Did you have um, old? The, the old faithful the command old faithful no i did not and i'm definitely gonna have to, oh, you I'm, gonna, have. I'm gonna yeah, change yeah. some stuff around on the cars and stuff i think that spotter is not a good choice yeah that was based off somebody else's list i threw it on there and i didn't use it at all this game yeah, i don't i've i don't i don't see spending two points for a command card at least not that one the only time that would have been I think would have been useful is if I was better about using Grievous Wounds, because then I'd have range 17 mm -hmm. Grievous Wounds. Well, Spotter is, uh, you, you put it on something within five inches of an enemy unit, and you get plus two to plus two to hit. Oh, never and mind. You're not, you're not really missing Kador. So that's yeah. your defense like 10. So. Um, I'm 10s and 12s. Okay, yeah. I, I read that wrong. I thought it was plus two inches for some reason. I was like, oh, that makes no, sense. No, no, it's, 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 it's plus two to hit. Okay. That's less cool. That's getting changed. <laughs> I mean, it, it could be strong. Like, so if you're trying to, if you're trying to use that as a, like, an, a build this as an all-around army, that could be strong as something like uh, Circle or Legion or uh, Cricks if, if you run into Cricks. But for the most part, um, I think something like... Um, Old Faithful is definitely a must. I think Old Faithful power swell, um, and if you don't have natural tactic, uh, natural uh, tough, uh, true inspiration, I think are like sort of requirement cards, and obviously breakthrough. And then you pick whatever fifth card you sort of want to have. So right now, if I, I, I dropped um, the blessed one, mm -hmm. and then I went, it's arcane forces breakthrough, careful recon. And then Old Faithful and Spotters. And that's like just changing what's there. If I wanted to keep the Spotters there. Yeah, yeah. I, I use the um, I use the Reposition 3 one. Because it allows my caster to reposition for the most part. Okay. Which, which helped me a lot. Because I basically, if I hadn't, I would have been Threat of Your Heavy Jack on tur after turn one. Yeah. So let me step back into the, into the deeper into the difficult terrain to be safe. Mm-hmm. AJ, I know it's kind of hard to visualize that because we just get told the visual novella of a game. But what do you think? How do you think that played out? From I, what... think, I mean, trying to visualize it as you guys are talking about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I think the points that I've made to you and he's made, he just made about, like, you <laughs> need to play a little bit more defensive with Rhett. Like, just in general, I think, in this, in this version yeah. of the game. Mm-hmm. They're just with that force field is just so powerful not to have them have at least one or two focus so you use that alpha strike and then you reload them and i think <clears throat> they're probably going to die because they're going to have to be so close and they're going to be like support models that are going to be easily taken out but those sorry those two turns like the feet turn and then the turn where they have like two extra focus on them is going to buy you the time that you need to basically stabilize the game and deal the damage and not get the damage hit back on you. And I think that's where Red's at. They're kind of like a huge defensive army where they're like, hit, now I'm going to go back into turtle mode, and then I'm going to hit you, and then I'm going to go into turtle mode. And then <laughs> that next turn is probably going to decide whether, you know, is the other army, you know, powerful enough to withstand basically three of my attacks versus me playing like a super turtle army. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I think I'm learning a lot with every game, so improvements, improvements. Yeah, I think I think you were you're completely right on the you're noticing that you should have um, had the jack step back after after round two, which you didn't do. Um, and if they if you had done that, it would have been a much different game because most of my stuff wouldn't have been able to charge you when I did, um, and so some of it would have had to run into you to sort of engage you. Um, and the stuff that didn't would have gotten the, gotten the initial charge. Um, and the little bit that would have been able to charge into, I basically would have had to overextend myself to do it. And so you would have had a shot at my caster, which um, I didn't really want. And yeah. I didn't have to worry about this game because you were cl a little closer than you should have been. Yeah. I definitely thought about it. I got thought about it more so, as you guys pointed out, on the, the rest of the jacks. I more so really noticed it on that far jack 
the, the jack that there was like basically on the table there was three jacks kind of in the middle ish area and there was one jack flanking around on the right of the mm -hmm. um guard tower and that's where like that was like you were saying was putting on the pressure of like i have to go deal with him because if i don't he will flank my caster kind of thing yeah yeah and you, you basically forced one of my great bears which is the most powerful of my jacks to go deal with him in a single unit by himself um and it forced him to go out of my out of my caster's control range because there's only 12 inches um to to get to him and to threat him um and uh it also meant and he was unsupported and if you hadn't gone around and had had gone back behind the tower i could have kept him more central and swung around and to where your caster was a lot more easily and by putting him out there you forced me to take a major chunk of my um offensive uh, power in this army and divert it to very a very little bit of resource yeah it was it was a good play you just didn't complete the play and keep me and keep him out of threat for long enough yeah so but that's our game um overall let us know if you could kind of if you liked it um next time i'm going to try to record our king of coin games or record my mm -hmm. games throw them up and then we can have like the discussion it'll be like a time lapse kind of thing and we'll just talk over it instead of just doing it in the podcast like this mm -hmm. um but yeah do you guys have anything else you want to talk about for the day um what's your guy what are you guys looking to do the rest of this week week coming up you guys got any big plans so I can go first on this one. I'm on leave this week, so my goal is to finish the red, start the skin, and like the flat, like the base goes, and then play absolutely f ton of Destiny because that comes out this week. So, Jesus. what a nerd! <laughs> I know, right? How dare I? Um, what a loser! Yeah, new Lightfall expansion drops. Uh, I took some time off with uh, the significant other. We're both gonna play at launch on the dime of and probably play it like no lives and then i took the next friday off to do the day one raid too so really nerding it up over here yeah. so i'm gonna sort through my models um if i have time <laughs> i'm going to <clears throat> finish putting together uh the last bit of infernal models i have because basically i don't i never got the uh, dark sentinel guys because i never thought they were worth it but okay. now that they're a unit, I'm probably going to put one together and mm -hmm. then finish painting. I guess I have to finish painting my Howlers. I have five. Two are painted, so I might just paint one and be done with it, but we'll see. Do you need a sixth? I mean, I wouldn't mind a sixth. I have one have. sitting. I have an extra sitting in front of me. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> I bought a box uh, when they were 50% off or 75% off at Christmas time at my store to get my sixth, and then I sold three, and I have one extra. Well, there you go. Oh, there you go. I'll have to get that for me next time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so uh, for me, um, I'm going to try and finally get this Signar uh, sort of uh, starter box uh, battle group done for demoing. Um, I'm going to try and get my Gen Con box actually finished um, before the army box comes out, if I can. Um, we believe have, in you. I have two watchtowers to finish painting. One of them I, I got base painted that we used today, and then one of them is just primed gray. And if I have time, I'm going to try and finish up the last little bit of my Grimkin that's unpainted. I think I have about six or eight models that are unpainted for my to be fully painted with uh, uh, FA2 of or full FA of all of the 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 units, um, and then FA2 of all the beasts that's for Grimkin, sweet. except for the I don't have a house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, question for you, since you brought up the demo games. Now, yep. with the changes to the movement, do you think adding a unit in would be worth it in the demo games? Like maybe playing like a 25-point game with like one unit? Because so, the movement rules are so different. Yeah, so I think that for uh, like a, a base demo game where you're taking a new player and you're just introducing the basis of the game to them, I think a, a, a box with a caster and two jacks or a, a caster and three jacks is fine. Um, I think that um, just sort of getting the, the base mechanics of movement, the uh, running is plus five, charging is plus three, um, the dice rolls, the you, add the you roll 2d6, add a die, try to equal beat another die mechanic. 
Let's get that sort of basic idea across the difference between melee attacks and ranged attacks um, is enough. Um, if you're doing it for someone who's like coming back to the game, having played in the past, or their person's second or third game, yeah, I think I think going to 25 points and using a, adding a unit is definitely worth it. Um, I'm not going to be able for the store armies. I'm probably going to have to uh, store the part of the um, the uh, release kit came with um, the uh, Signar starter box caster and two and the two jacks from the starter box and the Orgoth starter box caster and the two jacks from that. And um, I'm painting the Signar and then Jr. One of my one of our locals is painting the Orgoth. Um, and so that's all we're going to have. I probably will end up picking like a unit of engineers up for the Signar and like a unit of uh, Witch Coven for the Orgoth um, to have to play a, a more expansive game um, so that we can sort of teach them how units work and how supporting jacks work and stuff like that. I would, but, I would even say um, for like, maybe not like, so if someone's like coming, like maybe like you, like you said, the new, new players who've never played a tabletop mm -hmm. game just do the battle box. But I would say someone who's like mm -hmm. switching to Warhammer and they've played tabletop before, probably mm -hmm. like, I like the idea of adding a unit to it because, like, not a lot of the other tabletop games I've played have done that kind of movement that I've done, I've experienced. They don't have that like you move one guy and then the rest just teleport. I think that's very um, different. So if someone's like, there are there are some other games in the past that have done it. Um, the dust uh, uh, board, the dust board game, sort of was like that. Um, there are some other games. Uh, the the uh, Star Wars. Um, Legion, Legion, Legion is like that. Legion is is a lot like that because you use the the officer and the unit as like the the attack point or whatever. <sighs> but I would say, even like but like someone who's like coming from 40k, yeah, they're like, hey, I want to try War Machine. Throw a unit mm -hmm. in there because they have the idea of dice rollers and stuff, and they'll pick up like, oh, hey, you only need two dice, not three million, kind right. of quickly. Um, but yeah, it's like, hey, this unit, this is how units move in this game. It's a little different, but. I think one unit, they'd be like, oh, okay, they, they, can, they can start processing that very early. And then that might be enough to also be like, oh, this game's a little different, and they might like it more. So yeah, they'd be like, oh, I that's interesting. I'd probably, I'd probably do it in game two for, an, for a person that's never played War Machine before, but um, that's just me, my personal experience. Um, yeah, and if you're running the demo, it's obviously your choice. So, yeah. But I think it's not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, it just, it's figuring out figuring out what sort of units to take as that, as that additional thing to add in to, to, to make not make the game too complex because there's a lot of a lot of little rules to learn and know um off the bat with war machine i can see that you got to find like that right perfect like small right. unit that's even on both sides it's not going to sway at one or the other All right which is why i'm thinking like the the um the engineers for the or the mechanics for signar and the uh um wish coven Witch Coven for uh, Orgoth. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. So that's just my suggestion, and I haven't really. I'd, st I'd have to look at it and look at per look at points. The other thing that I think that um, that the the new boxes doesn't do is that, uh, and just ignoring points altogether, um, the starter boxes uh, are kind of un unmatched with the, the generics, and so. Um, you want people to just sort of play with the basic the basic loadouts of the war jacks with the new jacks but you also want to introduce the idea of changing the arms and changing the heads and sort of customization early i think and so maybe game two or game three is when you add the unit and you and you allow them to pick different spells for their caster and pick different arms for their war jacks because that'll allow you to customize to your play style a little bit more or just like what looks cool for like new players or too. What exactly what looks yeah, cool? The, the rule so of like, cool. That's why I don't so play like, Gong Guard. Yeah. So like for example, <laughs> the the standard loadout jack for the um, the Signar starter box is the Pike and the the Power Fist. That's what comes on the basic model. But you got to admit that sh the shield and the hammer look just badass. And so and everyone I've oh, talked yeah. to when I've been running the demo and I've and I've after the game I've shown them the different arms that are on them. They're like. That's the one I would play with. It looks even cooler if you put it on the right. light jack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, don't know. I don't know if you saw that video where AJ put the heavy arms on the light jack. Yeah. yeah. That was my favorite thing of all the new Signar. 
Because <laughs> it almost looks right, but it also looks perfectly yeah. goofy. Yeah. Oh yeah, they look b big, big and and heavy, and it and it looks cool, but at the same time, it also just looks goofy. Yeah. So. Very cool. All right, guys. Yeah. That's well. It. Thank you very much for inviting me onto the cast. It was fun. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for giving. You are always a wealth of knowledge, and it is it baffles me how much you know because I'm not even close to you. I I've been playing forever, man. Doesn't matter. I've, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't like, matter. I've taken like two breaks since 2003. So yeah, AJ always just just mean to me and teaches me things. You're I'm nice to me. you. <laughs> yes, you are. And Jay is very nice to me when he teaches me things. So it's like I get I get the good good cop bad cop between you two. <laughs> oh, okay. <All> right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? I just expect more out of you. How about that? See, see, bad cop right there. There it is. <laughs> A disappointed father. How dare you lose? Uh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> On that note, thank everyone for thank you all for listening to this episode of the Frostcast, and we will see you all next week. See you guys Bye. later.